site that uh, Dr. Fisher discovered last year. We found um, a little bit of impact from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill at this site, so we went back to see how it was doing this year. We need to make sure that we've surveyed the entire area, that we're not missing any impacts or any other communities around there that we hadn't seen. So um, that's tough. You know, you're working down there, 1,500, 1,800 meters, going to the same points year after year, trying to find the exact same coral colonies. This is, it's an unprecedented data set. It's something that doesn't exist out there. Okay, so if you've just tuned in, we've just photographed our second coral on this dive. We have 118 to go, so it's going to be quite a long dive, this one. The overarching idea is looking at ecosystem impacts of oil and gas inputs to the Gulf of Mexico. So we work on a lot of natural seep sites, and you'll see a few of those coming up where you have oil and gas coming out of the seafloor. And what we're really looking at is how close corals can get to that and how they adapt to those natural inputs and what we can learn from that that'll teach us about the impact from the deep water horizon. So this research I imagine would be fairly important in terms of how to manage future oil spills. Yeah, it's, I mean we're not alone in, in finding this, that the dispersant yeah. that was used during the spill has actually been shown to be toxic to coral larvae, to fish larvae, yeah, okay. to a lot of different things. Um, you know, there's some question as to at what concentration it's toxic, and that's okay. what part of what we were trying to figure out. And we've run some subsequent experiments, look, trying to see what sort of the threshold is. The people who are working on that question specifically haven't exactly been able to close the oil budget and account for every liter that yep. came out. Um, but it certainly didn't disappear. It was transformed in a bunch of ways. It was buried offshore. It's down in the deep sea. It's hard to find, but it's it's all there. Okay. It didn't go anywhere. There should be a lot of research into finding a and testing the, all the dispersants that are out there and finding something that actually increases the rate of microbial degradation. That's the intent, is to make spread out the oil, let the microbes attack it, and help nature do its work. Mm -hmm. It's one of the big lessons that, you know, that has come out of the spill is that the microbes will break it down. Um, that, you know, there are oil and gas inputs into the Gulf of Mexico, and there's a lot of organisms out there that are ready to deal with it. But when you start adding these other chemicals, it actually interferes with a lot of that process. Um, and so if you can find a chemical or a set of nutrients or something that'll speed that up, that's a great thing to do. Are the pictures and the data that you're collecting, will that information be made public? Well, first of all, you're watching it in real time, <laughs> so it's already public. It's all out there. Um, we've been uh, sort of publishing as we go. It takes a while to analyze the data. Uh, just recently, some of the coral experimental work that we do just came out from my lab and deep sea research. Everything's peer-reviewed, everything's out in the public for everybody to see.